Hello everyone! Over monetization in video games has been an issue in gaming for a very long time, but it has steadily been getting worse since late 2016. It feels like every year monetization has gotten worse, not just by how predatory it has become, but also by how it has negatively affected the content of games. When I was a kid, the worst monetization came from Call of Duty map packs, and those map packs were only bad, and that's bad with quotes because it split the player base. Those map packs offered content in the form of four multiplayer maps and one or two co-op maps whether they be Treyarch's Zombies or Sledgehammer's Survival. Those map packs or content packs had a price tag of around 15 US dollars. Now, every AAA game has a battle pass, a store, and if it has heroes or agents, those are usually locked behind paywalls or grind walls. What used to be the standard for terrible free-to-play games like Warface has now become the norm for premium AAA games, at least from Western developers. Now, I know what you may be thinking, how does this affect the content of games like I claimed? And that is a great question. Please allow me time to substantiate my claim. First, I'll ask you this question. If there are two game-breaking bugs, one related to content and the other related to the in-game store, which one do you think is going to be addressed first? If you play Destiny 2, you already know the answer to that question. There have been multiple instances where a gameplay aspect has been negatively affected in a substantial way for weeks at a time while a bug in the Eververse store, Destiny 2's in-game item shop, was corrected almost immediately, with the bug affecting gameplay was not addressed for days or weeks. That is only one example of what I'm talking about. Games release half-baked but at full price. Cyberpunk 2077 might be a great game now, but when it launched, it was unplayable on lower end rigs, PS4 and Xbox One, despite being listed for full price on those platforms. Even more recently than that, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 released with one of the shortest campaigns in Call of Duty history. It is even categorized as an update to Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 on the PlayStation Store, meaning it does not come with a platinum trophy. Yet it has an item shop with weapon packs that oftentimes provide competitive advantages on top of the game being priced at $69.99. Activision isn't the only company doing this. Rockstar is nearly worse. They all but abandoned Red Dead Redemption 2 Online because it would never be as profitable as GTA Online. GTA Online itself has been suffering from inflation. Inflation in GTA Online has reached a point where new players are either forced to grind excessively or spend real money to catch up. This kind of environment not only discourages new players, but also diminishes the enjoyment for those who have been playing it for a long time. It's a clear indication that the focus has shifted away from creating an engaging experience to maximizing revenue. And let's not forget about the mobile gaming industry, where over monetization is perhaps the most rampant. Games that are free to download often push players toward in-app purchases for progress or competitive advantage. It's a model that preys on the impatience or competitiveness, creating a frustrating experience for those who wish to play without spending. And if you were to say, well that's mobile games, I'd understand. Mobile games are significantly different than AAA games, but despite their differences, they're being monetized in very similar ways. Except I don't pay $69.99 for a mobile game. This shift towards aggressive monetization strategies reflects a broader trend in the gaming industry. As games become more expensive, that's more expensive with quotes, to develop, companies are looking for ways to maximize revenue, keep investors happy, that sort of thing. However, this should not come at the expense of the player's experience and satisfaction. The impact of these practices go far beyond financial aspects and content development. They fundamentally change the way these games are designed and played. When profit becomes the primary goal, the game design will suffer, leading to titles that are built around monetization rather than enjoyable and immersive gameplay. With all of that being said, and it looking pretty grim, not all hope is lost. The back backlash against these practices has led to some positive changes. For instance, the controversy around Star Wars Battlefront 2's loot boxes has prompted some game companies to reevaluate their monetization strategies. That in addition with legislation in some European countries classifying loot boxes as gambling. 
Moreover, there is a growing number of indie developers who are dedicated to creating games that prioritize player experience over profits. These games are often a breath of fresh air in the industry that is increasingly dominated by monetization. As consumers, as gamers, as players, we have the power to influence the industry by supporting developers who value ethical monetization and by voicing our concerns about predatory practices. We can help steer the industry in a better direction. It's important for us to remain vigilant and critical of these practices to ensure that the games we love remain enjoyable and fair for everyone. Over monetization in video games is a significant issue, but it is an issue that we can address as a community. Also, every game does not need a battle pass and a store.